Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, orto nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hormutis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass on this as we said, the Feast of the Finding of the Body of St. Stephen. In the Latin title, the word, of course, is Invenzione. Now, as we've said before, uh, Invenzione, yes, a trans literal uh, translation would be uh, invention, but invention, of course, Invenzione in Latin does not mean, um, uh, as we would say today, to invent, as in to uh, make something up. Uh, rather, instead, uh, invenzione means to discover the finding. Now, according to tradition, this occurred in the year 415 AD, on the 3rd of December, where a priest who served a church some 20 miles from Jerusalem was in his cot in the baptistry sleeping when suddenly he was disturbed by a vision or a dream of a man in gold and white apparel who bid him wake and who said to him, go to the bishop in Jerusalem and tell him to come and discover the tombs of the saints that lie here. This will bring a great many souls to salvation. The priest, Lucianus, immediately sent to the Bishop of Jerusalem, Bishop John, and explained to him his dream. And the Bishop replied saying, why don't you go and find these tombs for yourself first and then inform me when you have found them. One suspects that Bishop John was none too plussed about travelling 20 miles to the back of beyond to discover something or nothing. So Lucianus uh, then uh, goes home and waits really for instruction. But fortunately, a monk uh, in the area had also received a vision likewise but had received instructions as to where to find the bodies. So it was that following these careful instructions, they uncovered three coffins or chests, each bearing the name of saints, Nicodemus, Gamaliel and Stephen. It was Gamaliel that had appeared to Lucianus. Gamaliel, you may recall, was the great teacher, doctor of the law, who had taught St. Stephen and indeed St. Paul, who of course was originally the young man described in Acts as Saul. Nicodemus, of course, you will recognize as that member of the Sanhedrin who was acquainted with Christ. This occurred 20 miles from Jerusalem at a village called Kafagamala. Of course, Bishop John was sent for, but he was at council in a place, the Ospolis. So brought with him two other bishops, the bishops of Sebastis and of Jericho, who went with him to Kafa Kamala and there to see and behold the chests, the coffins that had been unearthed. Lucianus had waited for Bishop John to arrive before opening the chests. This now, in the presence of the bishop, they did. Apparently, when they opened the tomb of St. Stephen, the earth quaked 
and trembled. But a beautiful scent arose from inside the coffin. The bishop ordered that the sick and infirm be brought. And so 73 people were brought, were exposed to the relics, they kissed the relics, and they were instantly cured and healed from their maladies. This, my brothers and sisters, is the feast that we commemorate today. This is the event that we commemorate today. Subsequently, Bishop Chong took the remains of St. Stephen, leaving some of the relics at Kavukamala and leaving there the relics of Nicodemus and of Gamaliel. He took the rest of St. Stephen to Jerusalem, where by the end of the 5th century a great basilica had been built and the relics there venerated. Later, a portion or greater portion of the relics was removed to Rome and placed uh, next the relics of St. Lawrence, the great deacon and martyr of Rome, where they are still venerated to this day. The wonderful thing about relics is how they remind us of the incarnational dimension of our faith and of our lived experience as the body of Christ on earth. For the relics remind us that the saints were not just characters of history. And particularly in the case of Gamaliel and Nicodemus, who only receive a kind of passing reference, a kind of mini cameo appearance in the scriptures. The discovery of their relics particularly reminds us that the scriptures are telling us about real events and real people. The discovery of St. Stephen's relics, particularly, of course, being hailed as the proto-martyr of the church, the first martyr of the church. Not the first to die for Christ. Remember, on Sunday, we observe the seven holy Maccabees. And otherwise, St. John the Baptist, of course, was beheaded. They believed in the Messiah. St. Stephen was the first to die for the sake, as it were, of the Church and of Christ. To die purposefully and deliberately because he was a Christian. And it's true to say that we, particularly today, are very perturbed by human remains. We are indeed, uh, in some respects, uh, a much more sensitive generation than in times past. A century of huge leaps in medical science has perhaps made us even more sensitive to the prospect of death than in previous generations when death was always just around the corner. Where we now have pills and remedies, cures and all sorts to prevent us from dying. In times past, of course, they had none of these things. Herbs and potions, perhaps. But when you think today of 
the incredible advances in medical science that actually so many of us take for granted. When over a hundred years ago, something as common as the flu would wipe out hundreds, thousands of people every year. <coughs> as demonstrated perhaps by our reaction to COVID. <coughs> Where we have become so panicked We have even curbed, largely out of fear, <coughs> not just our behaviours, but even our principles. For example, the closing down of our churches we seem as a generation today to be much more inclined toward nihilism and despair and to fear death <coughs> unlike any previous <coughs> generation before us. And so some of us are a bit squeamish when we see the relics of the saints. And for sure, there are some macabre presentations of the relics of past Christians. Like the catacombs uh, in Sicily, where one can find the remains of, the skeletal remains of clergy dressed in their vestments, or what's left of their vestments, hung up along the walls or, or propped up uh, in niches. Or there is a uh, a chapel, I think, somewhere like Hungary, where the interior is wholly decorated with the bones of Christians whose remains have been deposited in ossuaries. but whose bones are now strung up like almost like Christmas decorations. Then there are those reliquaries again in Central Europe where the skeletal remains of saints are bedecked with cloth of gold and silks and jewels of all kinds gleaming behind glass fronted coffins and then there are the not so scary presentation of saints relics those of the incorruptibles where like St. Thérèse of Lesieux they lie in their coffins, 
as if asleep, like the fairy tale Sleeping Beauty. And yet it is, my brothers and sisters, it was perfectly acceptable just over a hundred years ago even for people to behold the remains of the departed and not feel squeamish. Indeed, in the 19th century, here in England, the Victorians thought nothing of having the hair of deceased loved ones wound and braided and integrated into jewellery. We are indeed, by contrast, a much more squeamish generation. We are, on the whole, a much more fearful generation. And yet, the relics of the saints actually speak to us of our Christian hope. See, they remind us that when the Lord comes, when the kingdom comes at the end of the ages, we will be given, as St Paul says, a new body. This corruptible will be changed for an incorruptible shell. There was a superstition at one time, perhaps from the medieval period, where it was thought one needed to be buried whole in order to be found ready for the last day when the graves, we are told in scripture, will be opened. And there are those scary pictures of on the last day, skeletons coming out of tombs. And yet, why then do we pull apart the remains, the relics of saints? Are we denying them the prospect of the bodily resurrection? Of course not. Clearly, that can't be what the church believes. Otherwise, indeed, the saints' relics would be left intact. But they are not. Because the resurrection body will be a new body. It may perhaps look similar to this body. We don't know. It may or may not be something similar to that resurrected body that our Lord had, which seemed to be able to be both physical and, and immaterial or spiritual at the same time. Who knows? What matters more is the potential for ourselves to be eligible for such a body. The relics of the saints remind us that we mere mortal ordinary beings can yet achieve extraordinary feats in our lifetimes that will guarantee us our places in paradise and the prospect of that resurrection body. The saints, relics, remind us that yes, we are but 
dust and ashes, and to dust and ashes we will return. Remember, Holy Church reminds us of this every Ash Wednesday. But recall too, that we should not think that the body is immaterial. That's not what the church teaches either. In terms of the realization of our faith in this life, this side of heaven, yes, our bodies are somewhat important. Again, something we take for granted until we are hurt. We need our bodies in order to realize life. We need our bodies to be mobile. We need our bodies to be sense interactive with the world around us. We need our bodies, in short, to be able to live in this life, this form of existence. And the dichotomy, of course, that St Paul mentions concerning our souls and our bodies is that struggle for ourselves to overcome and not succumb to the passions and lusts of our physical selves. As we've said before, the Christian life is about finding the balance between the spiritual and the material. It's about reconciling the spiritual and the physical. Our resurrection bodies will have perfected this or will be given to us perfected. But in this life, we must strive to realize something of that perfection now. It is, as it were, a testing, a testing of our love of God, a testing of our will. How much do we love God? Do we love him enough to conform our whole selves to his will? for his purpose, to live as he desires us to live. And this then is a question that we might ask ourselves today. Again, a question we should be asking ourselves every day. Am I living wholly and fully and striving and discerning to realise God's will, God's purpose for my life, Is this evidenced demonstrably in my attempts to live the restoration of the cross in myself, taking control 
of my body. Moderating the sensory experiences in order to benefit the soul. To allow myself to grow spiritually. Am I able to overcome my physical urges to conform my behavior to God's laws, to the pattern of life that God desires me to live? Am I controlling myself? Am I in control of myself? For this is key, of course, to living and realizing the Christian life. For all our sin derives from our lack of control, <coughs> from our lack of self-discipline, from our lack of willpower. Which ultimately betrays the state of our love for God. In the vision that Father Lucianus had of Saint Gamaliel, the great doctor of the law told him For many saints, for, sorry, for many souls would become saints by venerating the relics. Not because, as it were, the relics themselves are in some way more holy than your own flesh and blood than your own bones but because they speak to and remind us of our Christian hope of the promise and prospect of the resurrection body of the reality of the lived experience of previous generations of Christians who strove to become saints We should hope and we should pray, my brothers and sisters, we should hope and we should pray that we may receive that same confidence and trust in God. The previous generations had. That we may have that same faith in Christ's promises the previous generations had. That we may live and realize our Christian hope both now and forever. The remembrance of the saints is always to encourage us.
to remind us of our Christian hope, to remind us of the prospect of heaven, to remind us that God is faithful to those who are faithful to him. To remind us to put our faith in his promises. So let us seek the intercession of Saint Stephen, of Gamaliel, of Stephen, sorry, of Nicodemus, and of course of St Paul. These students of God's law who realize the fullness of his law in their lives, by their witness, and in their faith in he who was the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.